what hope does the country have? Let's talk about the media then. Uh, like all of us, Paul Keating, you've been closely watching the unfolding news of the world scandal in Britain. Are we seeing... I'm not glued to the TV over it. Truly not. But uh, are we seeing the beginning of the end of the extraordinary sway that Rupert Murdoch has had on politics, not only in Britain, in the United States and Australia as well? Well, it, there's one thing for, it's, it's clear, for sure comes out of this, and that is self-regulation by the media is a joke. A joke. You know... Uh, I notice uh, uh, tonight uh, John Hardigan talking about the Press Council in Australia. I mean, people shouldn't have a right to appeal about invasions of their privacy to somebody funded by newspapers. They should have a right at law. Uh, what we need, what we seriously need, which has been now recommended by the Commonwealth Law Reform Commission, the Victorian Law Reform Commission and the New South Wales Law Reform Commission, is a separate right of action in privacy, a separate tort. So, in other words, you don't have a right of appeal to somebody, you have a right to action. You have a right to the law. In the end, the only regulator of this bad behaviour is the law. And... This, this, this episode in Britain. Well, there's certainly no right to privacy in the law in Australia at this time. And uh, in actual fact, at a broader level, it's sometimes said that privacy will be one of the great issues of our time because of the internet, yeah. because of Facebook, Twitter, etc., etc. But it doesn't seem there's any chance at the moment you're going to get a consensus on this. But could the Murdoch issue reflect into this debate in Australia? Well, so, I mean, uh, uh, Minister... Connor is now sitting on the Commonwealth Law Reform Commission report. Very reasonable recommendations. It, it basically says, you know, if you had a reasonable right to privacy and there are no public issues involved and they are infringed, you have a right of action at law. For instance, those people in London who, who News International or the News of the World was asking the police to finger by their movements of, of, off their mobile telephone those people had a reasonable right to believe that their free movement through London was their own affair, that they had, weren't to be tracked by the police via the telephone system for the benefit of a newspaper. But do you believe this sort of thing only happens in Britain? I mean, could it also have happened in Australia? It could have happened in Australia. In fact, your, uh, your, your, uh, your um, chief executive officer made the very same point in a, in a speech uh, a year or so ago. He... he uh, I brought the quotation in, uh, which is a, which is a, a, a point. Um, he said uh, that um, um, Mark Scott, with digital surveillance, local tracking and genetic tracing becoming commonplace, is a very firm case for the law to allow people to protect their privacy. Correct. Correct. Let's talk about the politics of this uh, with the time we've got left. Uh, do you think uh, Murdoch's News Limited is effectively at war with the Gillard government? I think so, beyond doubt. I mean, when the, when the Daily Telegraph yesterday is saying, let's have a national election, why do we need a national election? We have an operating, a clear operating majority in the House of Representatives. It's a stable majority. The, the business of the government is reasonable business. That is, the, the controversial matter is, the, is putting a price on carbon. You know, there is, there is a consensus, it seems, in both Houses of Parliament for it. You know, why should there be an early election? Other than, other than the editors of those, that newspaper believing that were there be an early election, the existing government would be defeated. So this is why ministers are saying uh, News Corporation is after, or uh, News Limited is after regime change. You know, and I think, you know, how, how can you read it any other way? And, and do you believe, if that's the case, that it comes directly from Rupert Murdoch? Well, I'm not certain of that. I'm not certain. I think what matters to Rupert Murdoch mostly is the economic performance of his organisation. I think the, the test for him is what their EBITDA, what their earnings before interest and tax is, uh, rather, than the, uh, rather than the expression of policy for every publication. And, but, and yet uh, dealing with Rupert Murdoch has been something that Prime Ministers have always had to do. In fact, you gave some advice to uh, Tony Blair before he became Prime Minister on how to deal with Rupert Murdoch, as reported by Alastair Campbell. Um, he, Murdoch is a big, bad no, bastard. No, I never said that. You that, didn't say that? No, that's some... Alastair Campbell That's some said donkey who worked for Campbell said that. No, right. I never said that. No, I said the only way to deal with any of these proprietors is from a position of strength. That's the only way to deal with them. And, 
and in which case, so I dealt with them with a cross-media rule. And I said, you know, if you're in television, you can't be in print. So you look what's happened now. Uh, Howard took the cross-media rule away to suit them, and now you've got West Australian newspapers and Channel 7 together. You know, you'll see more of this. Well, I mean, Bob Brown is today calling for an inquiry into media ownership in Australia. Do you think there should be one? Well, inquiries into media ownership don't matter unless governments do it. The best thing the government can do, and Bob Brown can do, is to support the Commonwealth Law Reform Commission report for a separate law and tort and action in privacy. That's within their power now. But that's, no got, no, but that's got nothing to do with media ownership. Able to that, do today. That won't affect media ownership, though. Do you no. think there should be a media well, ownership well, inquiry? Well, I, I think um, uh, there's nothing wrong with inquiries, providing they matter. But when you take these things away, I mean, you know, when 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 Murdoch took over the, the Herald and Weekly Times group of newspapers here, he lost control of HSV7, which they owned, therefore the Seven Network. I made him sell down 010, uh, uh, as well as that, the APN set of newspapers, which are now controlled by the O'Reilly's. He lost control of the West Australian, for instance, you know. And, and you've just got to be hard with these guys, you know. Um, he said to me when we were doing this legislation, uh, but if I, if I buy the Heron Whitley Times, why can't I keep 010? I said, because that's not how the rule is going to operate. That's how, why. Let, let me ask you this, because we're, we're nearly out of time. Should the news of the world scandal and the questions in Britain over whether Murdoch is a fit and proper person to run a major uh, broadcaster, should that affect the government's decision, pending decision, on whether Sky, partly owned by Rupert Murdoch, gets the 223 million public contract to broadcast Australia's overseas television service? Well, that's portending. Uh, that the, who can know what the course of these inquiries are? Rupert Murdoch, I, under, I understand, has said he will appear before this inquiry, right? And so are other officers of News International. When that inquiry's terms are finished and and Ofcom, the British regulator... Oh, no, I'm talking about here in Australia. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm talking about the, uh, the Sky oh, no, I TV... Understand, I, I understand, yep. but, okay. you, but, but the, I understand that will, that that issue will be well and truly over before these hearings are finished. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that be the case? I'm pretty sure that. Uh, would. Well, Conroy's delayed it by six months. So in six yeah. months, the government has to make a decision whether to give 200 and, uh, 223 well, million be, dollar contract to. If, uh, there, if there if there were if there are important findings about these matters in Britain, it would must materially affect things here. Paul Keating, we're uh, out of time completely. We thank you very much for uh, coming in to join us tonight. Thank you, Tony. As usual, much more to talk about, too little time.